What's up everyone, James here from Party Time Brews. Today we are making a procrastination pale ale or IPA or whatever the heck it's gonna end up being. Basically I got four days until some sort of homebrew Hoptober festival. Festival? Festival. And I'm gonna see if it's possible to make a beer in four days and have it ready for Saturday. It is currently Tuesday. Three days of fermentation, one day of carbonating, and hopefully that's good. I'm a brewer. Party time, party time, party time brews. This song ain't no good, but we got nothing to lose. Party time, party time, party time brews. Here's another brewing clip. You can watch it if you choose. So here's something I probably don't recommend. After you decided to start your brew day, that's when to start looking at the recipe. Luckily, Brewfather is really easy to use, and I can figure out my recipe pretty quick based on an old recipe. For this one, we are copying the Nipa Rain Bill because I like the way that tasted. We're basically gonna do the same recipe, only not do all of those hops. We're gonna go cheapy, cheapy and quicky. That's the way to do it to make a good beer. I think there's some sort of triangle thing there. Cheap, fast, good triangle? I don't know, something like that. I've heard it before. Comment below. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go three kilograms of pale two row, two and a quarter of pills, one and an eighth of Viking, and some flaked oats. Recipe below. So yeah, we're gonna go and uh, finish milling this grain. Looks pretty good, tastes not too bad. So we gotta make the water, get them salts all good. I went with a one to two, one to three sulfate to chloride ratio. That's what's recommended, so that's what I used. And it worked on the last one. Then we're going and dumping everything in and starting the old dough in. She's real messy. Again, like the last one I did, this makes a damn mess. This one didn't turn out as bad. I used a little bit more water, but she's still kind of cement-like. Got it all going and decided almost right away to stir it up a little bit more. This thing was sticky. Well, we're mixing our hops. We got some Magnum for the bittering. Just going 20 grams on the bittering. Well, I'm gonna have to jump in here. We actually went 25 grams for the bittering. And for all you fashionistas out there, take a look at this outfit. We got Crocs, purple striped socks, plaid shorts, and a not bad band t-shirt. Back to you, Ralph Lauren. Going with half of what I did last time. So we're gonna go with 50, 50 grams. And for the final two, we're gonna go one ounce each of El Dorado and Simcoe. And we do the big lift. Everything seems to be okay at first. The basket sounds like it's draining. And then I decided to get lazy because it wasn't draining like I wanted. It was so bad that I decided to use the drill to mix it up again, which leads to a really muddy mash, which you'll see later. So I forgot about how hard the sparge was and how slow the sparge was on this one. Looks like we're gonna be up till possibly 11 or 12 o'clock tonight, but either way, should have a good attempt at getting this wort ready for a three day ferment. That probably won't work. But we'll find out. Stay tuned. And we're just going with the 25 grams of Magnum for the bittering. And as you can see here, the weird sparging technique I used probably made the wort look a lot muddier. Not for the carb savvy beer drinker. Now we can dump in those Whirlpool hops and we should be good to go. Then you just gotta squeeze the bag, get rid of all them good hop juices into the wort. So you're actually good to go now. Before you weren't actually good to go, but now you're good to go. Remember those first two times I said you were good to go? I lied. What you're gonna do now is aerate the wart. I used a paddle for it. Now you're good to go. Dump that wart into the bucket and you will be pretty much ready to sprinkle that yeast on. And guess what, my friends? Three days of fermenting and this bad boy is gonna be ready. Ish, hopefully. Close up the lid and then take the next three days to pick out a flattering shirt. So it's been almost four days and it's time to give this beer a testing. Kind of a horrible idea, I'm gonna waste it, but I'm just taking it out to a party and maybe people will try it and see what a fresh beer tastes like. A too fresh beer, an under attenuated beer. But let's give it a shot, it pours horribly so I got two glasses to see if I can do it. Got our handy dandy faucet. Look at that, pure foam. Excellent head retention. And there's a 90%. You can see the color is a very opaque yellow-ish. I'll try another pour, see if it gets a little better than that. I don't think it'll get much better, but 
We'll see. Here it comes. You know what, this one's pouring a lot better. So we got that. Let's take a little close up of it for you. Looks very opaque. Give it a little sniff. Don't know if my senses are off, but I'm not getting much smell at all off of it. Okay, there's a little bit. You got kind of the fruity, citrusy smell, which is pretty much what I expect because it was supposed to be kind of a hazy IPA. It was a bastardization of the NEPA that I made. But uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. First taste, it's uh, we got bitter. We can taste a tiny bit of hot burn, not too, not too much. Hopefully that'll go away over a little bit of time. Um, it has a very creamy mouthfeel, or at least what I describe as creamy, because again, haven't tasted enough to really know the difference. So yeah, I'll give it another shot. Yeah, I got no problems with that. That is not a not a horrible beer. Definitely one of the better tasting beers that I've done, and I think it'll only get better over time. I have to leave in five minutes to go to Hoptoberfest, one of the brew nosers, the local brewing club's annual events. Looking forward to trying that out and giving people a chance to taste some of this. But for now, it's only one thing to do. As you can see, the, it's not really cascading off the glass. The, uh, the head retention is not amazing, but there is some. Not bad at all. I definitely would recommend doing this if you are out of beer and you have a party in four days. Easy to do. Uh, I didn't take any video of me carbonating it, but what I did was, as soon as I was done, as soon as I kegged it, still warm, I gave it 40 pounds of pressure, shook the hell out of it a couple hundred times, put it in the fridge overnight, and then about 12 hours later, gave it another really good, give it another really good shake. Let that sit there for two hours, and then uh, and then finished it off by uh, letting out the pressure. Anyway, it's uh, pretty good. It's reasonably carbonated, not perfect, but it's it's definitely good enough to go. And look forward to sharing it with a lot of other people. Cheers. The one with the first pour wasn't quite as good as the second pour, so make sure I throw a little bit up before I pour for people. Good enough. Again, if you have to have a beer in four days, this is definitely a doable recipe. Not crazy expensive, but also not one of the cheaper ones, so give it a go. And I look forward, I'll try to do another tasting to maybe post it on Instagram or something later with uh, how it actually, how it turns out after two or three weeks. Have a good one.